One of these, they've been watching uh, me take these, and they said, well, why don't you ever open it up for questions and answers? So I'm going to open it up for questions and answers. Who's first time class here? Okay. Yes, yes. So essentially, this class operates in three ways. First, we do drills. The drills are in direct connection to what it is to be on film. Ease in your body, number one. Two, utilizing your imagination. <clears throat> so I will ask you to put something in front of you. You want to invest that hard. Actually, Omar. Omar will ask you to imagine something right on the wall in front of you. You want to invest so hard it has a physical effect on your body. Our imagination, once we see, we only see as an audience what the actor sees on film. So on film, you want to make sure that your imagination is at such a peak that it has some level of physical repercussion on your body, some level of behavior that follows through with it, okay? We call it an eyeline drill. We ask you to do that for two things. After we do the eyeline drill, we bring you into a circle. We do a tension and release drill, which is always about ease and comfortability on camera, which is critical, critical. And then we give you the script. You will go and prepare it like it's a professional set. Then we call you in one by one, and then we shoot it. Okay? If you have any questions throughout the process, just raise your hand, and I'll come, I'll come, I'll come find you. Okay? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this time I'm going to ask, you guys have any questions about some, for the, especially for the people who've been here before, what, what, what you're doing, what's working, what's not working, what's... No, not you, especially not you. Oh my God, damn. No, it's, it's so funny because I literally just did self tape and I'm like, I'm being asked, right? I'm being asked to just be myself. But as soon as the, the camera's on, it's the hardest shit in the world. What do you mean, just be myself? Like, they're like, oh, you're hanging out with your friends. You guys are sending each other pictures. And I'm thinking about how to do that, knowing very well that I know how to sit with my friend and talk and take pictures. So what do you mean, like, on your phone? You don't know how to sit with your friend on your I, phone? I do. And take pictures exactly. of yourself exactly. and then send them? Yeah. You don't know how to do that? I do. <laughs> but it's like, when I, get in, when I get in front of the camera, and I'm aware this is the job I've chosen, but it's like... What happens? Think, what happens when you get on camera? I'm in the head, like thinking, like how. How do I take how do pictures? They want, how do they want this to look? Oh, uh, so you're in your head about a result that you feel the casting director wants. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get caught in that result. Then what happens? Then I'm completely having the worst time of my life. Okay, so then you could have what? Have the worst time of your life and still give that over to character. What stops you from doing that? What stops you from being in that level of truth, owning it, giving it over to the scene, giving it over to the character? I guess it's, it's still thinking like it's supposed to be a certain type of way. Well, but it is. It's whatever way you're in right now, right? You can't change it, and you're sitting there trying to adjust what? Do you get me? Yeah. So I got to go. If I'm, this, if I'm in my head, I cannot be my own psychiatrist and take my... I'll talk to yourself. Okay? You're not going to have that space to yeah. sit there and debate with yourself to try to calm you down. So either you're going to accept the truth of where you're at yeah. and give that over to the character, or you're going to what? Make it worse and worse and worse. Look, the, the reason why they want you to be yourself, well, what they say be yourself, because what the fuck does be yourself mean, right? <laughs> but the reason what they, they're wanting a level of loose, a level of freedom, yeah. all right, especially on set. So the more you get stuck, Thinking about what they want instead of honoring what is true to you, you're in deep shit. Yeah. You're in deep shit. So at some point you have to throw, go, this is, if I'm failing, then I'm failing. If I'm not doing what they want, then I own I'm not doing what they want. And that failure brings in another sensation. But I can't <laughs> fix it in the moment. Clear? Thank you. Anyone else? This is for you guys to ask questions. So everyone's going to be brilliant today. <laughs> this is great, Dion. Uh, I feel you, you sort of just addressed it, but I have a, a similar issue sometimes where I feel like I'm not feeling uh, the urgency necessarily. The what stake, do you mean? Like stakes aren't, maybe Hi. I feel a little flat, you know what I mean? Okay. And so I know from, I, well my idea is super objective, right? That's what keeps you... That's the engine that keeps that drives the scene forward, absolutely. So sometimes I get stuck in a little bit of 
it, I can go to anger. You know what I mean? Like, and like you said, maybe just honor that. But maybe I feel it's not right for this. When does this come up? When it has to be. When I have to be vulnerable. Vulnerable. Right. Instead of if I feel like the character has to be, you know, crying or something. Wait, do you feel that, or is that in text? It's, it's you know, yeah, it's in text. Okay, so this is play. right on today. Okay, so today, you're going to have to get to a level of vulnerability. You're going to absolutely have to. So when we feel this pressure, Dion, right, this starts when we what? When we read it. When we read it. So it's always, every time you act, you always want to go, it's not actually real, it's heightened. Right. So it's always life or death, right? So for you, the minute you go vulnerable, what happens to you? Have to cry. Yeah. Oh shit. Right. Oh shit. <laughs> so what do you do? This is I've seen you do this. Have you seen him do this with Exer? You'll sit low. I never had him. Oh, you never had him for Exer? No. It's like you're holding in the biggest dump of your life. <laughs> your body contorts. Do you know what I mean? That cute little face goes twisting. So what's this pressure? Why do you put this pressure on yourself? I don't know. I just sure you know. You do it. <laughs> you do it to yourself, man. Because the minute you hear vulnerability, what comes up? With my vulnerability? No. Person? The minute you see it in a character, what comes up? Some snaps right into you. It's just like, oh, well. well I fear that I won't be able to do it. Right, so you feel incapable. So then the minute you feel incapable, then what? Because this is all psychologically in your head. It's not real. Uh -huh. You're not sitting there going, it's not me, it's the character. You're putting the, 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 the onus, the responsibility on you instead of going, what is going on with this guy? Right? So then because it goes on you, then what do you start to think? I think I have to... Go to a certain place. Yeah, I gotta go to this place yeah. I wanna go to. Yeah. I gotta remember this event. Uh -huh. Well, how do I go to this event? Oh, this is so hard. Right? And then the minute that starts happening, that spiral, then what? I don't know. Yeah, you know, you do it. Yeah. You got, I want you to see how this process mm -hmm. works for yourself, right? Yeah. First, I go incapable. Then I go, I have to go, think of something that's going to make me cry, right. right? Like, you're like Will Ferrell and Tal Digg and that you're going to stab yourself in the leg. Yeah. Do you know, what, what can I do to get myself to cry? Yeah. You know, I'll go out on the street, you know, scream something, you know, and then someone will beat me up. You know, so you go through this whole thing of what you need to do that's going to lead you there. Then what's the last step? Because you're not looking at the script. You're not building the character's life going, okay, this guy is coming from this specific place in his life at this specific time. He's this type of person. Uh -huh. So what? right after you go into all the things that you have to do, what's the last step? I just fucking execute it perfectly. Well, of course. <laughs> Always. And that's why you're working. No, right, uh, Dion? I don't know. I mean, sometimes, I mean, it's a, sometimes I'll try to fucking... Cry, right, know? you'll push. Right, yeah. That's the last step. From that level of logic, from I'm in, incapable, we'll go right to push. Yeah. Do you get me? However we get there. Instead of going, what is going on with this character? See, because what you're trying to do is have your ego control it. Instead of going, wait a minute, my investment has to be outside of myself. My investment can't be me. It's not about what I'm doing, it's about what the character's doing. Do you get me? So if I can start to set up this guy's life, start to see elements that I can give to him from my imagination, from my intellect, from my dissection of who, who I see this guy to be in this specific circumstance, then the responsibility is not on me. Then it doesn't matter whether I think I'm incapable or not. Do you get me? If I always sit there, even look, if Daniel Day Lewis was sitting there going, oh, I gotta get to a get to a time in my life where I'm crying all the time. You know what I mean? Like, you think he would have a character life. No. He'd still put the burden on himself, which means that your ego is invested in trying to feel capable instead of your a creativity going, let me create a character. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest difference. So anybody who gets caught in, well, I can't, I can't do this, it's because they're putting themselves above the character. And that's a real danger. 
Do you know what I mean? There's, there's people who go, I can't get to sexuality. I'm like, what are you talking about? Because they're not seeing the woman or the man they're playing. They're seeing what they feel they need to do instead of what they get to create. And the minute we put, on, put it on ourselves of what we see we need to do, it's going to feel like it's impossible. It really just is. I can't sit there and keep going, oh, God, you know, what do I need to do to get to this state of being if I don't see the life that I'm creating to be in that specific state of being? So part of the responsibility for you is to go, is I, am I in an I? I have to. Or am I in a he? He's doing. He is. He's living it. Once you're in a he, it takes the pressure off, and then we don't worry about crime. When we know we you know we understand the vulnerability, but the vulnerability is something inside of the character that's being exposed in connection to a circumstance. Do you get me? And then we start really playing with the details of that circumstance, clarifying it. So you have to really be careful with yourself. Am I putting too much on myself, or am I really seeing the life I'm creating? Is that, is that just, yeah, it does help. Can I just add one more? I don't want to take up too much time. On it's okay. I mean, for me, sometimes <coughs> I feel the the in to a character is to just think of it like, as you. Like, yeah, like what would I? Like, what, what, how would I feel if this happened to me? You know what I mean? And that could be. Yeah. Okay. So wait. So you're you're looking at a script going, how I feel is happening, but it's not happening to you. It's make believe. Yeah. It's pretend. Yeah. Do you get me? So you're in. In other words, if you're trying to see them as a person. Right? That's really what you're saying. How would I deal with this if I was in this circumstance, right? But then I got to go, I'm missing an element of the life that's, in cre that's outside of myself, right? So if I create that life, I'm going to see my connection to the guy way more clearer and way easier than if I go, how would I, put my, how would I be in this situation, right? So in other words, I'm playing, you know, Superman. I... How would I be if I was a superhero, you know, and I got, you know, fucked with by, you know, uh, a, a master villain? I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. Do you get me? How would I be as a cop, you know, who killed a kid, you know, because he was grabbing, he was going for a candy. You know? I'm like, okay, I got to see the cop before I can make that bridge. I'm not going to be able to make that bridge by just going, oh, this is how I see me in this in this circumstance. Do you get that difference? Yeah. So the the way to get to that bridge, even more specifically, is to create the life around it. Do you know what I mean? Because then you can really go like it's like you know somebody, therefore you can have empathy for them. If I don't know somebody, I, I'm not really going to have empathy for them. Do you know? I'm not going to be able to put myself in their shoes. So the more that I know the person, the easier it is for me to put them put myself in my uh, in in their shoes. If I don't know the person, the more I get in my head about it. So I think there's a balance. Sometimes you're going to read something and automatically get ahead, right? Instinctually, somehow I get what the circumstance is for the guy. I get what the struggle he's up against. I get what he wants. Sometimes your gut is just going to tell you that. But you still got to remind yourself it's still a life outside of me. He has a different mom and dad. He grew up in a different place. So the more that I get to see that life, the easier it is for me to understand or put myself in his shoes. Do you get me? So it's, it's, not, it's, you, it's always being aware of being diligent. Do you know what I mean? And being detail oriented and going, okay, yeah, I might get an understanding, but I still have to create the, the life around the circumstance that I'm reading from the page. I can't just automatically jump and go, how would I be in this circumstance? Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? Because you're a different person than the character. Yeah. You come from different places. Right. You know, so the more you can set that up, the, the more that you can automatically go, okay, now that I see the guy, now I can find a real, a, a real interesting bridge. I mean, can understand what his choices are, why he's here, why he's there, you know. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Yeah. I wanted to ask you about tension in front of the camera. I noticed from last class that the thing that bothered me the most about my take was the tension that I had on my face. Yeah, so what happens when you hear action? This is where tension always starts. 
Because you, you could be the not coolest comics person, taking the notes, talking to the director, smiling. Mm-hmm. And then, ow! You know, it's like someone shoved a huge pole up their ass, you know? <laughs> so what happens right before action? <laughs> well, my, I'm thinking immediately going to previous circumstances, maybe there's something there that I, that I didn't fully create. What do you mean? Right before action? Well, I, no, no, no. What I mean is, I should Oh, God, I that's a lot of work. <laughs> no? Oh, right before action? No, no, no. Because no, action, I'm like, what? Fuck it. Now I, it's go time, baby. No, no, no. I mean, I, I mean that I should have the previous circumstances way before Oh, action, no. Yeah. Well, you got to have previous out. circumstance the minute you read the script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to have understand your connection to that circumstance way before you get on set. Way before. So that the previous circumstance, there's a clear connection. It's living in you. Something happens to you. When you hear action, what happens to you? I freeze. I don't know. I'm asking. What did What did you see with, with her last week? What the detention? Uh, what I, I I remember her take. I don't remember the. Where did the tension show up? I just feel like the tension came up when there was an, uh, a lot of emotion. Yeah, so that means you're just not releasing something, right? You're not uh-huh. allowing yourself to release something. So I think you're you're trying to make something happen instead of just allowing it to happen, right? So that's where the tension comes from, is, is, is putting yourself in a flow <coughs> of trying to do something or wanting it to look a certain kind of way. You know what I mean? You wanted it to look a certain kind of way, not allowing whatever to, to, to uh, whatever you were going through to just be enough. So you were holding on to something. Mm-hmm. Or you were certain it was not enough. Yeah. You were that. certain that uh, this, I don't mm-hmm. got enough going. But most importantly, honey, you're not coming back to yourself. You're sitting there worried about previous circumstance, the scene, the emotional life. That's a lot to fucking worry about on action. Yeah, Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm sitting there on action, okay, where's my previous circumstance? Okay. <laughs> my brain's going to start to fry. Do you know what I mean? And I've seen it with people, you know, where you start going, well, I don't know what to say. And by that time, you, you, when the minute your brain starts to run, you're automatically trying to prove Either trying to prove something to yourself, right. trying to get to the result of what you saw in your head of how the scene should look, mm-hmm. right? So all of that goes, you know, anything that you had working goes out the window. Right, right. it's a trust. But yeah. if I come back to myself, because look, it, the only way you learn how to trust is to take the risk, to disconnect from everything, to let go of all your preparation mm-hmm. and to come back to you. It's the only way we learn how to trust. Do you know? Because you can't do a trust fall exercise with yourself, right? You can't go, okay, catch me. Do you know what I mean? So the only way you can get the understanding of what it means to come back to me and let every expectation and result go is to just to do it. It's to really do it. It's the only way you're going to find out. So you're not sitting there getting aware. Right. God forbid. Come back to you, your homework shows back up, your preparation shows back up, but you go, no, it's not going to show up. I got to get back to the previous circumstance. I got to get back to pain. I got to get back to this thing. Right? So that means the results are taking way more precedent than you. If the results take precedent, that means you're in your head. So on action, got to get there, got to get there, tension. You know, anytime you, you say to yourself, as, and th- this is for artists in general, anytime artists say they have to, mm-hmm. they're doomed. They're doomed. That pressure is, is it's suffocating. When artists go, we have to, we have to do this, we have to. It has to be creative, free. So there gets to be a connection back to us so that freedom can exist. If the minute we get caught in that thing of, Right before, and especially in auditions, because auditions are the worst fucking process in the world, right? We're being evaluated. So that when we feel that evaluation, so if we don't come back to ourselves, well, then we're in our head about, is this the right thing? Did I make the right choices? What is she looking at? What is he looking at? It's the same on a set. And God forbid we have camera problems where we don't want to be seen, really. Do you know what I mean? Where we think we're ugly, where we think our body is wrong. God forbid that shit happens, because the minute we hear action, you know, we try to hold our breath, we try to do all this different shit, because we're certain what we look like is not going to be accepted. Do you know what I mean? So you get to find ways to go, oh yeah, the real job is, is to get back to me that allows my homework, my preparation, my talent and creativity to show up. But to do that feels wrong. 
right? So like the, the last thing people think that they should be thinking about before action is them. But how else are they going to get free? Right. How else are you going to allow certain things to just show up? How else are you going to get adjustments? You know, Waz said something very smart. He's like, there is no time in the last two years that a script adjustment hasn't been right there. Like a director's brought complete changes, blue pages to every fucking project he's done. So he has to get out of his head so quick because his homework feels like it's lost. So now he's making decisions on the fly. Now he's making adjustments right there and then. How do you think he does that? At some point he has to let go of everything he thought and come back to himself. Do you know what I mean? He has to be able to go, okay, now I'm looking at this. Let me make new changes and trust that if I show up, my talent, my creativity, and these choices can live. These new choices that I'm determining right now. Mm -hmm. You know, because otherwise you can't be adjusted. That's the real problem with young actors is you can't be adjusted when you're holding on to results. Mm -hmm. And that's why really, you know, most directors won't work with newbies now. They really won't. Because first of all, most young directors don't know acting at all, <laughs> at all, nor do they care at all. Do you know what I mean? And this is from the, the Oscar winners on down. They're looking at you like, oh, vulnerability, just do the fucking scene, <laughs> you know? So you have to go. I'm not in that place that a lot of these actors were in the 70s or in the 80s when they were invest investigating acting. They don't care now. Mm -hmm. So there has to be a sense of, okay, how do I bring something that the director can move and use? Well, that comes from freedom. That doesn't come from suffocation and holding on to certain X, Y, and Z elements. Mm -hmm. So when you feel that pressure, honey, you got to go, I'm not, I'm not showing up. So if you don't show up, how do you expect your preparation to show up? How do you expect your homework to show up? How do you expect your choice for what you made for the previous circumstance to live in you. There's no way. Do you get me? Because you're not there. You're in your head. So you got to take the risk to go, okay, let me get back to me in some way, you know? Mm -hmm. And then if, you know, like literally there's certain people like Chris Farley used to think he was the, you know, ugliest, craziest dude. So he would, he would really have to go, okay, here comes ugly boy, you know? <laughs> and he said all this crazy shit to him. He was on drugs, but he said all this crazy <laughs> shit to himself just so that he can let himself be free, mm -hmm. you know? And then that level of freedom, man, it becomes infectious because then the first moment you're like, you're out of your head, then things start to happen. Choices start to come to you. Preparation starts to come back. It starts to hit in different places. So then the, the piece opens up. Is that clear? Yeah. So come back to yourself. Take the risk. Even if it feels like you're doing the absolute wrong thing, <laughs> take the risk and see what happens, okay? Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I have something that I, I want to work on. I'm not sure how to work on that. There's always, uh, I have a lot of tension as well, like in uh, my scenes, a lot in my face. And I've realized that on any set that I'm on, I always get asked to do all the action <coughs> in the scene. Like, if, if, no matter how many actors are there, I'm always the one who's going to be doing all the action, the movement, the thing, the, the, the. What do you mean? Like, if you have to have somebody who gets up on the table. Oh, the blocking, thing, like the business? The, yeah, or like the bag, or packing, whatever. It's, it's just, it's always me. So I end up having, you know, to, all the action, all the, and I'm running around, and then I'm, and then, and then there's always big pressure for time. It's always like, come on. What come sets on. are you on? Who are you working with? <laughs> I work in France. Oh, <laughs> God. So, but even still, I don't get why they, 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 they must just single you out. They're singling you out for a reason. Because I have usually higher energy. Maybe. Or maybe you look like the most prepared. You're the good girl at the front row of class. Yeah, you see that right now? <laughs> I know the answer. You know, I was going to go sit in the back. And I <laughs> it's interesting that they put you in the business. So when you're doing, we call it the business, right? Okay. You're getting up, you're moving, yeah. you're doing blocking, you're grabbing this, yeah. you're turning around. Yeah. The minute that that happens, what happens to you? So what happens is that I end up, I'm, I'm so busy thinking about getting everything correct and right and doing it all. And, and then I realize when I watch the tapes afterwards that I'm always, um, that I'm not doing my best work, that I'm not relaxed, that there's all this tension. And I think what I do is I operate with general distrust. What do you start? Do you start to think about what you're what you're doing as you're doing it? So in other words, I'm like, okay, I'm going over here to pick up the coffee. Then I'm turning here. I'm closing the door. Then I have to go back. 
Do you know what I mean? No, like I'll, I'll work it out, like I'll, I'll block it quickly according to text or, or beats in a scene or I'll, like once and then I, I can do it, like I'll remember it when I do it. Okay. But it just feels like um, there's, there's, yeah, like general distrust. Like I just feel like, you know, that you, I've been on, there have been a new, just several occasions now where I've asked the you know the uh, the DP what my frame is like and then I, I haven't been informed I haven't understood maybe I haven't understood but so I feel like, uh, you know, I'm like okay then the director's rushed or then he hasn't chosen the the, the take that I yeah to. part of it and sounds I, like you're not standing up for yourself kind of do you I know what I mean like, and there's always like a fussier actor than me on set that needs to be taken care oh of, yeah and I'm always really kind of easy to work it's what I've gotten out and so now well you know, look look I'd, I'd rather you be enough. yeah I'd rather you be specific. Yeah. Go through it with the director. Ask questions. It because what really that dialogue yeah. alleviates tension. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So you're going okay. Why am I going over here? I'm going over there. Why? Because I want him to see me while I pick up the coffee. Uh -huh. Am I turning around and ask him as character? Okay. Do you get me? Especially when it's blocking, right? So I'm moving over here and I grab the uh -huh. gun and I turn around. I don't want to show the gun to him, right? Uh -huh. So then you're going through. The whole scene after they tell it to you. Do you yeah, get me? That I do, but it's just that. When no, no, no. I'm saying go over it like you're a dummy. Oh, okay. Go over it like stupid. I, the, the example that Susan br brings up is yeah. Sandra Bullock, right? Mm -hmm. She's on. They're on set with Ocean's Eight. Uh -huh. She's literally has the script in her hand. Uh -huh. Gary, this is to the director. Uh -huh. What are we shooting? Uh -huh. Gary's like, you got the script, Sandy. She's like, okay. Wait a minute, what are we doing? Are we doing this scene? We're doing the scene in your hand. <laughs> Susan's looking at her like, what the fuck is wrong with her? Yeah. Flake squeak, I don't know what we're doing. Then she'll go and pow, turn around, come back. Oh, okay, I got it, we're doing this scene, right? Okay, what do I say? What's your character's name? I'm t it, it goes to that level. Now, Susan thought that at first that she was fucking with the director. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's her process. Okay. Do you get me? It's a way to get her out. I thought that was brilliant on her part. Do you know what I mean? It's a way to get out of everything that I thought. It's a way to get completely like I'm like a brand new baby, mm -hmm. right? Completely fresh and new. So you go over every single thing. Uh -huh. It feels like it's being you're you're doing it as you're going over it, right? So I say, be the blonde. Be the dumb blonde. <laughs> Because, yeah, what happens is that then I don't ask, I, I do everything I'm being asked to do, but then I don't feel considered and respected, and then my work shows. Oh, yes. Yeah. See, no, I don't. I, I, look, as a director, I'm, I, I hate this, but as an actor, I do this, okay? okay. As an actor, I'd be the double one. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what you just said. Okay. Right? And I go, the director will look, Carl, you know, you're a director. You should know. I'm like, no, I don't know. I, well, do you want me to walk here? How many seconds? Do you want me to turn around? Why do you want me to turn around? Turn around where and look where. Uh -huh. Why? Uh -huh. And I'll keep asking. Quite, I'm the most annoying motherfucker. <laughs> I swear to God, as a director, I would hate working with me. Okay. Because I keep, what I'm trying to do is get so far out of my head. So know every single detail of what they're looking for and incorporate it into how I see the character. That I keep asking questions. Now there's a time frame. Uh -huh. There is. There's. There, I'll get conscious of. Am I taking up too much time? But I. I don't. I don't worry about that. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm a spoiled little bitch. Okay. And I act like a spoiled little bitch. Do you get me? So I don't sit there and go, okay, you know, you're taking up too much time. And be like, yeah, I just don't want to ask anymore. You know, like a 13 year old. Like I'm done. I'm done asking. Do you know? And I, I swear to you, honey, the more that I do that, the more comfortable I feel. Now, of course, I got to get over the fear uh -huh. of first initiating that process. There's a real terror with me in that. Do you know what I mean? So I'll talk, you know, I already talk loud, so I'll talk real loud. Yo, where's the director? Do you know what I mean? Like, I'll start with that. Director here? Yeah, yeah. I don't understand. And then I'll be like, Jesus, shut the fuck up. Like, I'll hear myself. And then I'll go, okay, yeah, come here, man. And then I'll, then I'll get into the conversation. But I got to say it real loud. Do you know what I mean? Like, real loud and stupid. Then, I'll, there's sometimes, honey, I'll go to the character of Carl and have the character of Carl engage with the director. So sometimes that's a real, you know, real earnest white guy. Hi, I'm 
just try to see what we're doing today. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious. I, I have questions. Sometimes that's the real ghetto stupid. Yo, man, what the fuck? Man, we taking too long. Like, it will, because it's just a way for me to get out, right? So I was working on this movie, I was there, and literally this director, he didn't know, he's like, which Carl am I dealing with today? I said, who do you want to deal with? Do you, like, because by this was day seven, yeah. right? So I'm like, well, you know, I'll, I'll give you the thug today, because, you know, he looked at me wrong for some reason. White dude, I was like, yo, I'll give you the thug. You know, he was like, well, where are you going to go? I'm like, I don't know, what the fuck are we going to shoot? And I literally started walking and pacing, and as I was doing this, like, I just was free. I was out. Do you get me? I was really out. When I did Law & Order, it was the same thing. Do you know, I just got out. So it's a way you get to feel how you get out. Robin Williams, he needed to do stand-up on set. He literally would do jokes and jokes and jokes and jokes just to get himself out. It's how he knew his freedom was there. So you have to find your own way of getting there. But if they keep asking you to do all this stuff, uh -huh. you have to go through that stuff very specifically. Uh -huh. Do you know what I mean? So that it kind of gets incorporated into how you see the character into your work. And then you take the risk and go. Okay? okay? All right, guys. Um, so look, first drill, the main thing, invest as much as possible in your imagination. Take the risk. Omar's going to take you through. Then we will go. Let's go.